Hello there everyone, Aidan here from Push Square and today I'm here to talk about State of Play. Now this isn't going to be a roundup, it's going to be more of an impressions video because State of Play is only 20 minutes long so if you really wanted to know what was shown at the thing you could just watch it there. So this is going to be my impressions, some of the big hitters, the things that impressed me the most at this showcase. So straight out of the gate we had Tekken 8 which You'll not be surprised to know if you've been watching me on the channel for a little bit. I haven't played Tekken, but this looks pretty cool and it may be my first one. The lighting was stellar, the animations were really nice, it kept that more video gamey, you know, that, that side to side brawler look whilst having really great graphics and lighting. And I just like that, it's it's taken away the, the retro video gameness of it in one aspect, but then keeping it firmly in place in the other if that makes sense. But I thought Tekken 8 looked pretty cool. I'm not gonna lie, I did not know that we were up to 8. I thought we're like 7 or 6 maybe. I, I, I literally could not have even told you what number we're on. 8 was a bit of a surprise. Now we got a look at a couple of PSVR 2 titles. I was a little surprised. I thought we were going to get a release date but that didn't happen. We got a look at Star Wars Tales from the Galaxy's Edge and I'm not gonna lie guys. I'm in a major dip with Star Wars content at the moment, I just cannot be bothered with it. Kenobi, say what you, I thought it was rubbish, but I just, I'm in a real low point of interest and in all honesty I'm not even sure if I'm going to play this, but what I will say is I always feel a little bit bad for VR games because the gameplay can never go up to the you know, up to par with these 4K AAA games because that's just not how they look on the flat screen. But when you're actually playing this, having played quite a lot of VR in the past, I know this is going to be an absolute looker. And if you're really into Star Wars, then great, I'm sure this is going to be a big game for you. But I just, I'm not really bothered at the moment. We got a look at Like a Dragon Ishin, which I believe is a remake of a game that's previously only been available in Japan so this is the first time we're getting it in the US and beyond and it looks cool, I'm not into these games at all but I know how popular they are, they're always popping up in the top 10 open worlds, RPGs, like people love these games and going by Twitter there was a massive reaction to this thing, just people freaking out over it and I'm always happy to see people excited over games even if I'm not really there myself. It's something I feel with Nintendo a lot of the time. You look from afar and you're like, oh man, those guys are having fun and that makes me happy to a degree. We got another look at Hogwarts Legacy and this game, I'm, I'm not a Harry Potter, I used to be a Harry Potter guy but I'm not really now so this game isn't like high up for me or anything like that. The thing that surprises me is I feel like this game would be really easy for them to just fully go out like show how big an RPG this is like just release 10 minutes of some coordinated gameplay of you going through Hogwarts and out to the dark mystical forest or something like a wee bit of broom flying all of this it would be really easy but for whatever reason we've just been getting these trailers that don't really do much for anyone of course this this time was slanted towards PlayStation users showing a an exclusive quest that we're going to get but still, I just feel like these trailers have been showing the same thing over and over again and to me it's getting to the point that it almost looks a little boring. I'm starting to question whether it's, you know, the game that people hope that it is, is actually there. Let me know down in the comments if you feel the same. I, I feel like they could be doing a better job of showcasing this game but maybe that's just me. One of the most chill looking games, well I say chill, it started out looking pretty chill, was Pacific Drive. This is a sort of indie game, I really liked the vibes to start and then it just kind of took a turn in a way that I didn't expect. It's like this weird car game where you're trying to survive in some sort of like sci-fi, retro sci-fi stuff, it, I, I don't really know what the deal is but I was intrigued, I liked the art style. I was watching the showcase with a mate and he just said I'm waiting for Annapurna Interactive to turn up and I've got to agree it has that look to it. This is a first time debut game from Ironwood Studios I believe and it looks cool, I'm actually going to be checking this one out I think. So something I did want to talk about and I may go into another video with this, we got another look at PlayStation Stars 
which is this digital collectible aspect of PlayStation Plus where or not PlayStation Plus, just PlayStation in general. It's free to join and you'll be earning digital collectibles, presumably, or not presumably, you will be earning discounts for the store through the likes of trophies and obviously the bigger the trophy, if it's a platinum, it's going to be worth way more. The whole idea of this is cool and I'm totally behind it from the, the, the perspective of just adding something else for the players that love to delve into, you know, put the time and the effort into games, they're getting a bigger reward for staying committed to PlayStation. That's cool, it's very much in line with trophies in, in that instance, at least in my opinion. The thing that I don't like about it is that they are sort of having this skewered perspective that they're trying to slant it as a social aspect. They're saying like, you can show off your digital collection to your friends. Who is going into their house with their mate? Turn that PlayStation 5 on mate, let me show you my digital collection, it is massive! No, I, d I just don't feel like anyone's doing that, it'd be a nice thing for yourself, you know, Astro's Playroom had a lot of those, it was nice seeing those different things like the PS3 or the old controllers, the, the memory cards, all of that stuff, I enjoy it and I'm sure a lot of you do as well, it's just a little weird that they're trying to slant it as a social aspect when it really isn't but overall I think that this is good as long as we stay out the NFT space of course that's the thing everyone thinks it is it's not but I get why people would be worried that it might be I know I'm gonna sort of get abused with the fact if I didn't mention it but Project Eve turned up it's now stellar played it's a PlayStation exclusive coming in 2023 uh, looks alright yep <laughs> uh, one that is really exciting though, no, Rise of the Ronin, I think that looks pretty cool, it seems to be a weird mixture of uh, like an open world game with some potentially Souls-like combat. I like the whole vibe, this, this clashing of like old age Japan with this sort of European invasion I think. Uh, I only watched the trailer the one time but I got a pretty good impression. 2024 is a long time away and that's assuming there's no delays so it is a little weird that we're getting this much of a look this early, I, I always prefer it if we get something a little bit closer so you don't go, oh look at this really cool game, you're going to have to wait years. But anyway that looks cool, it will be interesting to see if it lines up with Assassin's Creed Codename Red and Ghost of Tsushima 2, if they all come out at the same time, there's a lot of sort of Ronin Samurai stuff all into the mix. Could be a busy and interesting time if you're into Samurai games. But of course the thing I wanted to talk about the reason I've made this video is God of War Ragnarok. We got our first full on story trailer and I'm not gonna lie, the, to start, the stuff that they have shown before this looked cool but I just, it, none of it ever got me hyped up. I knew that I was going to be interested, I knew the quality was going to be there, Santa Monica Studios wasn't going to mess up in that regard, at least in my eyes, but this here, this damn trailer looks so good the the shots that we received the colors the settings it was insane it just showcased how dynamic a sequel this is going to be and going by what a lot of the developers and people that worked on this trailer were saying that is only really scratching the surface but you cannot lie to me when you saw thor and kratos throw the leviathan axe and mjolnir and clash in the middle oh that gave me some goosebumps i was screaming the place down i have been watching this thing on repeat i may actually make another video delving into that trailer a bit more so let me know if that's something that you're interested in but whew, this trailer i cannot wait 9th of november please hurry up i need this game in my life and just as a little additional thing we also got a look at this limited edition playstation controller i think it's i think it's rubbish to be honest if you're going for god of war you're saying limited edition i'm half expecting something that's a bit more themed maybe feels a bit different you know the texture's different not just a blue and white controller with a logo on this you know i could put i could probably print that logo off and put it on myself just feels like a bit of a waste in my opinion <laughs> but anyway guys Thank you for watching. Let me know what you were thinking of this state of play. I personally prefer these over the, you know, the last one we got was Gamescom. It's way too long, two hours of full of games. 
I love these state of plays, it's just 20 minutes, no waffle, we're just straight into the trailers, a little bit of information, bang, into the next one. I love that, it doesn't waste your time, it makes it really fun and allows Sony to just get in and out, you know, blow the minds of many gamers for all these different games and then just leave. That's awesome, I love it. So let me know what you think and as always, thank you for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the channel if you're on the hunt for more PlayStation content just like this and I'll catch you next time on Push Square. See ya.